we talked about equations of motion for translational movement and rotational movement. Now it's time to talk about general movement of rigid bodies and their equations of motion. Finding unknown forces when it comes to general movement involves a combination of translational movement along with rotational movement and sometimes using relative acceleration to figure out the unknown forces. Let's do a bit of recap but I really encourage you to watch the two videos before this to get a full idea of how we can figure out unknown forces using equations of motion for rigid bodies. They can be found below in the description. Now imagine a random object. For this example, I'm going to use a blob. Now there are forces affecting this blob along with moments. Now if we find the center of mass of this object, we can say the sum of all the external forces would be equal to the mass of this object multiplied by the acceleration caused by the said forces. We can draw that like this and this is called a kinetic diagram. We can represent those forces with these equations respective to their axis. So one is for x-axis forces and the other one is for y-axis forces. The moments can be found about the center of mass using this equation. It says the moment about the center of mass is equal to the mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration of the object. The mass moment of inertia can be found using these equations depending on the object we are faced with. I'm only showing a few. If you search for them, you can find lots of equations for all sorts of objects. Something to keep in mind is that if a question says there is a wheel, a disc or a ball rolling on the ground without slipping, the acceleration at the center of the object can be found using this equation. You should also be familiar with using the relative acceleration equation. If not, please see the description. Lastly, remember what happens when we do cross products of unit vectors, since this will be needed to solve questions. Now we can start on some examples. Let's take a look at this question where a slender bar is released from rest. We need to find the initial angular acceleration and the tension in the cord. So the first step is to draw a free body diagram. We only have the weight and the tension. Next, we will draw a kinetic diagram. So we have the mass times acceleration at the center which would have the x and y components and there would also be a moment created about the center as well. Now we can write our equations of motion. First, for the x-axis forces. So on the left side, we only have the x component of the tension. On the other side, we have the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So for the left side, we use the free body diagram and for the right side, we use the kinetic diagram. Next, an equation of motion for the y-axis forces. We have the y component of the tension and the weight on the left side. And on the right side, we have the mass times the y component of acceleration. Since we have two equations with three unknowns, we need another equation. That means we need a moment equation about the center. But before we do that, we need to figure out the mass moment of inertia for this bar. We can find that using this equation. The mass is 2 kilograms and the length is 0.3 meters. Let's solve. Now we can write our moment equation about the mass of center. We will pick counterclockwise to be positive. Only the y component of the tension would create a moment since the x component goes through the line of action at the center. The perpendicular distance from the y component to the mass of center is 0.15 meters. On the other side, we have the mass moment of inertia which we found before multiplied by the angular acceleration of the bar. Okay, so we ran into a problem. We have three equations but four unknowns, which means we need one more equation. This is where we need to consider the acceleration at point B and use relative acceleration. That's usually how solving for general plane motion works. You will have to consider relative acceleration for most questions. We will use the acceleration at the center of mass with respect to the acceleration at point B. If we draw the acceleration vector at point B, it will be perpendicular to the cable because it's a rotation about a fixed axis. There is also something else to consider as well. Since the bar is released from rest, the angular velocity is zero, which means we can forget about this part of the equation and just worry about the rest. Remember, when we use this equation, everything must be in Cartesian form. If you are unfamiliar with this equation or you need a refresh, please check the description. So we have the acceleration at B broken into i and j components. On the other side, we have the acceleration at the center written in Cartesian form. And then we take the cross product between the angular acceleration and a position vector from g to b. 
Let's take the cross product first. So remember, k cross i gives us j. Now we can equate components. Finally, we have five equations with five unknowns. You can solve them however you like. Those are our answers. Let's take a look at this question. We have a ring that's being pulled and we need to find the initial angular acceleration and the acceleration of its center of mass. The first step is to draw our free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. We have the weight, the normal force, and force F. For the kinetic diagram, we have the moment about the center of mass, and we have the mass times acceleration at the center, which is pointing to the right. The easiest way to solve this problem is to write a moment equation about point C. If we write it about point C, then we can ignore the normal force and the weight since both of them will go through the line of action. Before we write our equation, we need to figure out a few things. First, the perpendicular distances from point A to C. For that, we can use trigonometry. If we draw a right angle triangle like this, we can see that the opposite and adjacent lengths would be very helpful to us. So the vertical length would be 0.4 sine 30 degrees plus 0.4 meters. And the horizontal length would be 0.4 cosine 30 degrees. We also need to figure out the mass moment of inertia, which for a ring can be found using this equation. The mass is 10 kilograms and the radius is 0.4 meters. Now for our moment equation. We will pick clockwise motion to be positive. So we have the x component of force F multiplied by the perpendicular distance to point C and then the y component of force F. The x component is positive because it creates a clockwise rotation about point C while the y component would create a counterclockwise rotation. On the other side, we have the acceleration at the center multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the center to point C, and lastly, we have the moment created about point G, which is the mass moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. Again, we use the free body diagram for the left side and kinetic diagram for the right side. So our equation has two unknowns, which means we need another equation. Let's look at the acceleration at the center. We know the ring rolls without slipping, so the acceleration at the center would be angular acceleration multiplied by the radius of the ring. Now that we have two equations with two unknowns, we can solve them. Let's take a look at one last example. This is going to be a long one. In this problem, we have a bar that's sliding along a wall, and we need to find the angular acceleration and the normal reactions of the walls at A and B. As always, we will first draw a free body diagram and a kinetic diagram. So for the free body diagram, we have the weight, the normal force at A, and the normal force at B. For the kinetic diagram, we have an acceleration in the x-axis and the y-axis because we can see that the bar moves down and to the left. We also have a moment created about the center of mass since the bar is also spinning as it slides. The next step is to figure out the mass moment of inertia for the bar. The equation for it is this. The mass is 12 kilograms and the length is 3 meters. Let's solve. Leaving that to the side, let's write our equation to the motion. First, for the x-axis forces. The only force affecting the bar in the horizontal direction is the normal force at B. On the other side, we have the mass of the bar times the acceleration in the x-axis. Remember, for the other side, we're using the kinetic diagram. Now let's write another equation for the y-axis forces. We have the normal force at A, the weight, and on the other side, we have mass times acceleration in the y-axis. We have two equations but three unknowns, so we need another equation. A moment equation would work. The question is, where is the best place to figure out this moment? The goal is to get rid of as many unknowns as possible. It would be great if we don't have to worry about NA or NB. So what point can we use to eliminate those forces? If we continue these vectors ahead a bit, you can see that it intersects right here. I'll label this point O. If we take the moment about point O, we can eliminate NA and NB because both of those forces go through the line of action. It's good to visualize the bar rotating about this point. So before we write our moment equation, let's figure out the perpendicular distances from the center to point O. We need those values to write our moment equation. We see that using trigonometry, the perpendicular distance from the center to point O would be 3 cosine 60 degrees divided by 2 and 3 sine 60 degrees divided by 2 since the center is at the middle. Using those, let's write our moment equation about point O. We will pick clockwise movement to be positive. 
Let's go through the equation. On the left side, we have the weight multiplied by the perpendicular distance to point O. On the other side, using the kinetic diagram, we have the mass times x component of acceleration times the perpendicular distance and then the same but with the y component of acceleration. Lastly, we have the moment about the center, which is the mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. Let's simplify this equation. Okay, so we have three equations with four unknowns. So we need more equations. For that, we can use the relative acceleration equation. First, let's draw another diagram, this time showing the accelerations at each point. The acceleration at A would be to the left and the acceleration at point B would be straight down. And of course, we have the x and y components of acceleration at the center of mass. Let's write down our relative acceleration equation. It's going to be the acceleration at the center with respect to point B. So on the left, we got the x and y components of the acceleration at the center. And then on the other side, we got the acceleration of point B plus the cross product of angular acceleration by a position vector from B to G. The angular acceleration is clockwise, so it's about the negative z axis, and the values for our position vector is the same as the values we found before for our moment equation. Then we have the angular velocity squared, which is given to us in the question multiplied by the same position vector as before. Let's simplify it. Now we can equate i and j components. Unfortunately, this is still not enough to find all unknowns. We need one more equation. It's going to be another relative acceleration equation, but this time we're comparing points A and B. So let's go through this equation. On the left, we got the acceleration at point A, and then on the other side, we have the acceleration at point B, plus the angular acceleration cross multiplied with the position vector from B to A. Then we subtract the angular velocity multiplied by the same position vector. Let's simplify this equation. We can now equate the components. In fact, we only need one more equation, so let's equate the j components. Now we actually have six equations with six unknowns. You can solve them any way you like. Finally, we get our answers. That should cover the types of problems you will face. I hope this video helped you and if it did, please consider sharing it with your friends and classmates. They too might find this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching and best of luck with your studies. Thanks so much for watching and best of luck with your studies.